This is the China in Depth Today is March 4, 2023. This article is from Reuters. How China's new number two hastened the end of Xi's zero COVID policy. Li Chang, recently elevated to number two on the ruling Communist Party's Politburo Standing Committee, drove the decision to activate reopening plans sooner than intended in order to contain the economic toll of the zero COVID campaign and protests that had rattled the leadership. Beijing has not publicly explained its decision-making process behind its U-turn on the zero-COVID approach. Reuters assembled an account of China's path to reopening after speaking to more than half a dozen people with knowledge of the discussions. The upshot was a chaotic reopening in December, when China suddenly ended lockdowns, mass testing and other restrictions. The previously unreported details offer a rare window into deliberations among top Chinese officials and healthcare experts, including differences between Li and Xi about the pace of reopening. The people spoke on the condition of anonymity because of the subject sensitivity or because they weren't authorized to talk to the media. The protests in November marked a turning point in Xi's handling of COVID management as he started to take a less hands-on approach and allowed Li, his longtime ally, to take charge. Top leaders ultimately opted for a hurried reopening that would pacify the young protesters because the threat the dissenters could pose to the regime's stability was seen as more politically risky than allowing the virus to spread unchecked. In October 2020, Chinese officials met to discuss how to unwind the strict zero-COVID policy that had been implemented by Chinese leader Xi Jinping. Wang Huning, deputy head of the party's Central COVID Task Force, led the meeting and asked attendees to work on various reopening roadmaps with differing paces. The National Health Commission proposed benchmarks for full reopening, with the key being improving the elderly vaccination rate. The local-level party workers and healthcare officials were struggling to implement the zero-COVID policy due to lack of funding for testing companies and security firms. A local leader of a sub-district in Beijing reported that they were unable to enforce the policy. Beijing's local government spent nearly 30 billion yuan, $4.35 billion, on COVID prevention and controls last year. Party leaders are expected to present plans to help the economy recover from pandemic curbs at China's annual meeting of parliament starting March 5. These plans will likely take into consideration the various reopening roadmaps discussed in the October meeting, as well as the benchmarks proposed by the National Health Commission. As officials worked on reopening plans, the virus was already outpacing the government's ability to contain it. An official at the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, said that as infections soared in the autumn, staff would regularly ask senior CDC managers if the number they were seeing was too high and whether they should report a lower figure to the public. The CDC did not respond to a request for comment about China's case data and its involvement in reopening talks. Doing so could make it seem the outbreak was under control, the person said. Local authorities were running out of money and salaries for some CDC officials were cut last year. In response to a Reuters request for comment, the NHC said China had continuously optimized and adjusted prevention and control measures with the aim of protecting health, and had transitioned smoothly to reopening in a relatively short time. The official said they had been cutting up to 50% of the data to make it seem the outbreak was under control. The NHC said China had been optimizing and adjusting their prevention and control measures with the aim of protecting health. The CDC did not respond to requests for comment about China's case data and its involvement in reopening talks. Li rose to prominence in October when he was appointed to head the party's central COVID task force. Xi himself began to take fewer precautions, meeting with US President Joe Biden and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau without a mask. She wavered and wanted to revert to the zero-COVID approach in mid-November. This caused renewed debate on COVID policy among top leaders during mid to late November. Despite pressure from the president, Li resisted slowing the pace of reopening. Li encouraged local party officials, including in Shijiazhuang, to stick with the 20 easing measures. Shijiazhuang halted routine community testing due to hundreds of new infections daily. Li's efforts have resulted in a successful reopening of the country. In late November, a deadly fire in China's Xinjiang region sparked protests calling for an end to zero COVID, leading to the biggest show of dissent in mainland China since she took power. In response, Chinese President Xi Jinping blamed the protests on youth frustrated by the pandemic and announced sweeping changes to the COVID policy, 
ending many curbs such as lockdowns and mass testing. Immediately following the reopening, the virus was unleashed and hospitals were overwhelmed. Lee urged officials to promptly deploy resources and secure medication and treatment for key groups, including the elderly and children. Lee declared that the timing was right to manage COVID as a less severe, Category B disease. On February 16, she declared a decisive victory over COVID, describing the party's judgment and decisions as completely correct, effective, and well received by the public. This article is from Wall Street Journal. China's Xi Jinping shrugs off criticism and push for even more control. Late last year, Chinese leader Xi Jinping faced a wave of protests across the country opposing his zero tolerance COVID 19 controls and even calls for him to step down. In response, he has proposed plans to give the Communist Party more direct command in security, finance, technology, and culture, while diminishing the government's role in policymaking. These plans are expected to be approved by the National People's Congress during its annual session, starting this Sunday. The new economic team is expected to try to address concerns about the government's support for the slumping property market and tech industry, which has come under regulatory clampdown. Li Chang, the party's number two official, is due to step up as China's new premier and has already been courting private businesses in a bid to encourage investment and rebuild confidence. He will be joined by He Lefeng, a longtime Xi confidant and chief of China's top economic planning agency, who is likely to take a vice premier role overseeing the country's economic and financial systems. Last year, Mr. Xi faced public opposition to his zero COVID policies, but he is now pressing to further concentrate Communist Party control and rebuild confidence in the economy. He has proposed plans to give the party more control in security, finance, technology, and culture, while diminishing the government's role in policy making. Li Chang and He Lefeng are expected to lead the country's new economic team and will work to address concerns about the government's support for the slumping property market and tech industry. Mr. Xi faced tough tests of his leadership in 2020, with his insistence on zero COVID lockdowns and abrupt pivot from this policy leading to economic strain and decreased trust in the party. His assertive diplomacy and continued support for Moscow further damaged China's standing in the developed world. Despite these policy missteps, Mr. Xi has continued to exert firm control while pursuing his agenda. He still has control of the military, security forces, and propaganda apparatus, which are key levers of power. The political climate in China suggests that damage to Mr. Xi's authority does not represent a challenge to his power, but rather an opportunity for him to tighten his grip. The National People's Congress, NPC, is taking place in China, and President Xi Jinping is set to benefit from the event. Economic activity in China is recovering faster than expected, and the NPC is a chance for Mr. Xi to emphasize his preeminence. Mr. Xi believes that China needs a centralized governance system to deal with issues at home and abroad. To bolster Beijing's ability to defend against threats, the party's central propaganda department is likely to take over the National Radio and Television Administration and some of the functions of the Ministry of Culture and Tourism. The NPC is a way for China to show unity and harmony. It is also an opportunity for Mr. Xi to push his agenda and strengthen China's ability to defend against threats. The National Security Commission, established in 2013, could be restructured to strengthen party oversight over security affairs. Agencies dealing with restive areas on China's periphery could be transformed into units that report directly to the ruling party. The Ministry of Science and Technology could face a similar restructuring. Xi Jinping is planning to tighten control over China's financial system by appointing trusted associates to manage the central bank and reinstating a party commission to oversee financial policy. The exact details and timeline of the restructuring plan could not be determined. Some elements of a previous party and government shakeup initiated in 2018 have yet to be fully completed. The restructuring plan could strengthen party oversight over security affairs. Xi Jinping is tightening control over China's financial system. The timeline and details of the restructuring plan are yet to be determined. Chinese President Xi Jinping is looking to restructure the Chinese Communist Party to become more efficient in operation and management. He believes that policy missteps are due to poor local execution of Beijing's directives and is trying to ensure local governments take the blame for the failures. 
he has been reiterating demands for political loyalty and making efforts to regain public trust. Officials have acknowledged shortcomings in how they exited the COVID situation, but have characterized the broad policy shift as necessary and correct. In a February meeting, she declared that China had achieved a major and decisive victory in its fight against COVID-19. Ahead of the Congress, officials and state media have continued to promote Xi's priorities, such as the push to deliver common prosperity. The restructuring will ensure the party becomes more scientific in its institutional setup, more optimized in its allocation of functions, more complete in its institutional mechanisms, and more efficient in operation and management. She is trying to ensure better governance while the central leadership exerts overall control. He is also looking to ensure that local governments take the blame for failing to implement policy adequately, while still making efforts to regain public trust. This article is from Bloomberg News. What Wall Street Gets Wrong About Xi Jinping's New Money Men China is about to see its biggest reshuffle in decades as a generation of internationally respected economic officials step down to make way for a new group of politicians with strong ties to President Xi Jinping. This has caused concern from global powers, as they fear the new government will lead to more state intervention and international isolation. However, there is an alternative view that suggests that trust from the top, experience in China's political system, and a pragmatic approach to policymaking are more important than economic credentials. This could mean that the new team may be better placed than their predecessors to push through the needed reforms. The National People's Congress, which begins on March 5, is a key event to watch as it will set the GDP growth target, likely at around 5%, reduce the fiscal deficit, and may include a shakeup of government agencies. Bloomberg Economics predicts that if China implements the right reforms, maintains steady trade and technology ties with the US, and addresses the aging population issue, their economic growth could reach an average of 5% by 2030. However, if they fail to do so, growth could slip to 2%, leaving the US as the world's biggest economy. The incoming lineup of Chinese leaders is causing Western observers to be pessimistic as Premier Li Keqiang is leaving and is being replaced by Xi's former chief of staff, Li Chang. Harvard graduate and vice Premier Liu He is also leaving and is being replaced by He Lefeng, who is being considered for the role of Communist Party secretary at the bank. Central bank governor Yi Gang is being replaced by Zhu Hashin, a veteran banker with less extensive academic credentials. He Lefeng and Zhu Hashin have known Xi for more than four decades and have risen from local government. Li Chang was responsible for the strict Shanghai lockdown during the COVID-19 pandemic. Liu He made an agenda-setting call for the market to play that decisive role in China's economy in 2013. Yi Gang is a renowned scholar official and taught economics in the U.S. 1978 Deng Xiaoping's open-door policy introduced market liberalization and global engagement. Late 1990s, Zhu Rongji's reform of state enterprises. 2001, China joined the World Trade Organization. 2007-8, global financial crisis weakened Beijing's confidence in free market model. 2013, Xi Jinping confirmed Lurch left with initiatives such as Made in China 2025 and Common Prosperity Drive. Suppression of protesters in Hong Kong. Human rights abuses in Xinjiang. Strategic partnership with Russia unveiled. Foreign investors had a pessimistic outlook on China's prospects due to the October Party Congress, where she won a third term and installed his associates in key positions. However, stocks began to recover due to the unified team potentially being effective, and the COVID restrictions being lifted. This market reversal speaks to the shortcomings of black and white readings of China's leadership. Deng Xiaoping was praised for liberalization, but he also introduced the one-child policy, and Zhu Rongji closed small state firms but also aimed to create state champions. Private sector firms have flourished under Xi, with their market value rising from 10% to over 40%. However, analysis from the Peterson Institute shows the share edging down at the end of the period. Under President Xi Jinping, China has relaxed restrictions on foreign direct investment, allowed foreign banks to have a larger presence in the country, and removed the requirement of joint venture partnerships for foreign car companies. Bloomberg Economics predicts China will have annual economic growth near 5%.
Citigroup analysts predict that Li Chang's policy style will be pro-business, relatively liberal, and pragmatic. Policy change is less about overcoming the resistance of state enterprises than winning over millions of citizens. This will be needed to raise the retirement age and to continue growth-boosting urbanization. China's biggest growth challenge is its shrinking working-age population, which is set to drop to 550 million by 2050. Therefore, pushing back the pension age is a priority for Xi's new leadership team, though it is unpopular with citizens. Hundreds of millions of migrant workers and rural dwellers still face barriers to where they can live, but for many, the appeal of the big city is fading as living costs rise. This is something Xi's new team will need to reverse by raising taxes on high earners to fund improvements in education and healthcare. Policy shifts are often driven by circumstance rather than ideology, with Xi starting his first term with a full-throated commitment to market reform only to be met with a series of crises. The appeal of the US as a model to emulate has also faded in Beijing's eyes. In the end, it's important that she feels able to give his new team the space to deliver solutions to complex problems, and that they have the grit to get things done. Since she started his third term in October, there are signs that pro-growth pragmatism is in the ascendancy once more, with COVID-0 controls lifted, Liu Ha trumpeted support for entrepreneurs and a senior official visited Alibaba. Bloomberg Economics forecasts China's GDP to grow 5.8% for 2023, with the end of COVID lockdowns providing a one-off boost. Even with the smartest policy mix, this pace of growth cannot be sustained due to the high debt and dismal demographics. Xi's new team can avoid too sharp a slide with some good decisions. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next one.